Hello everybody, uh, Warren Martin here, and my first video I talk about just starting this series here. And so, uh, this particular video, I'm gonna keep it short. I'm just gonna talk about the stroke experience itself. Um, if you've had a stroke, you already pretty much know the experience. Uh, if you're a family member of someone who's had a stroke, you probably know it too. So, and that's why moving forward in future videos, I'm not gonna talk about the stroke itself, but more about rehab, recovery, things like that. This one real quick. So March 2022, you know, I was finishing up in the bathroom, uh, dried my hands on towel, turned to go back to the sink, you know, to kind of step out of the bathroom and I lost my balance. My, le my left leg just didn't move. And um, and then, you know, I said, hmm. I didn't really much think about it and then I was trying to take a step and then I threw my hands down on the sink. Then I noticed my left hand, my left arm, oh, wasn't there either. So I knew something was up, but it still didn't occur to me that I was having a stroke. I mean, I wasn't lightheaded or anything like that or felt like I was gonna pass out or anything. And so I, uh, you know, I opened the door and I did a hop, a couple of hops. Still didn't occur to me what was happening. Uh, so where our bathroom is, you know, uh, there's a bedroom I use as my office, and that was like, the door was adjacent to the bathroom, so I was able to hop to that door, and then that door to my desk is about three feet or so, so I was able to kind of hop, hop along. Still didn't occur what was happening other than something was wrong, you know, so, but anyway, uh, so I got to hobble over the desk, and turned myself around and flopped down in the, the chair, the office chair. And I was kind of leaning backwards in the chair. I, I noticed my left arm was dangling. And so at this point, this was kind of simultaneous things going on. So I reached for the phone because now I know something's wrong, something's happening. And um, and there's a term I'm using, a minute with God, uh, that, I'm using, that I'm using in the title of the book that I'm writing about the whole thing too. So I'm trying to, so of course I grabbed the phone because I want to call, call my wife, Debbie. Now it did not occur to me to yell out and, you know, I think because my mind was kind of going places at this point. So drop the phone. Oh, okay. There we go. Drop the phone. But meanwhile, simultaneously in my mind now, I'm doing this, not now. Dear God, not now. And the thing that may be a little different, you know, most people don't want to die. You know, oh, I don't want to die. And I wasn't thinking about myself. I was thinking about my wife, my family, my kids, my grandkids. So that's what was going through is, is you know, uh, the realization that I'm, I'm an important part of their life. They need me. And it's not, you know, I don't need to be going now, I guess, as you would say. But so that was my minute. So I had a few seconds. Meanwhile, simultaneously, trying to reach for my phone, can't reach it, having this little conversation I had with God. And then we got this, uh, a little nine-year-old Boston Terrier, blue-eyed, gray-haired Boston Terrier suddenly is licking on my hand. Uh, maybe that was a sign from God, I don't know, but, you know, they say dogs have instincts, and, but, you know, she's licking on my hand, and so that was helping me kind of grab the phone. I was able to get the phone, call my wife, call Debbie. Now, she's in the bed, in the bedroom on the other side of the bathroom. Uh, she usually goes to bed earlier than me, so she's in bed a few hours the phone and I never call her on the phone you know I go in and check on her and stuff but uh, so she answers the phone she says what's wrong you know she instinctively thought well something might be wrong because I'm calling her uh, and all I could say was mommy because we call her, I call her mommy she calls me pop or daddy uh, but I didn't say mommy I said mommy and you like mommy you know zombie zombie movie type thing. So anyway, <clears throat> and then I said, mommy, need your help, you know, and I hear the door. As she opens the door, coming out, she says, what's wrong, you know? And I said, mommy, that's, was it? Uh, she didn't ask him, she, she just looking at me, hi, you know, after we talk, she knew what was going on with me. I heard, I'm still laying back in the chair, I'm looking up at the ceiling, my left arm still dangling. Uh, I think I dropped the phone or threw it up on the desk, I don't know, but uh, I hear her on the phone with 911 operator discussing the situation. 
Now, my so I'm hearing conversation with the 911 operator, and in my mind, one minute later, the reality was it was four minutes later. Not big bang on the door. She yells at them, come in, doors unlocked. And it was the uh, it was the ambulance, the paramedics coming in. And I hear voices. I hear two voices. One started talking to her and one started talking to me immediately. Going through all the, hey, what's your name? What's, what day is it? All this stuff with me. Then the, another conversation going on with my wife about, okay, name and all that stuff. And, um, and so that was up to that point, you know. Um, so I did check with the Creve Car, Missouri uh, Fire Department. Uh, I checked later to find out what was the actual response time. And it was like f just under four minutes, which I thought was amazing. But so I'll just give a shout out to them because um, that was amazing. And, you know, so anyway, I'm in the chair doing stuff, sticking in the IVs. And then a couple minutes later, I had a couple more voices. And then about a minute or so later, I feel myself being picked up by these four sets of hands throw me in the chair. You know, I'm still looking at the ceiling, so. So that's that part of the experience and they take me off to Mercy Hospital here in St. Louis. Um, yeah, and the little funny part of the story, I'm, you know, they wheel me out the door and then the, uh, the dog follows me out and tries to get in the ambulance. So that was a little humor there uh, after the fact, of course. Uh, you know, so, uh, but yeah, so that was that, that part of the experience. Um, Another I think so I got to the ER, I remember them rolling me out there. I was waiting the whole way onto the ham and on the hospital, which was about a three minute ride, maybe four because they're right down the road from here. So that's another that was another blessing. And then we also get the um get to the ER they, they you know they wheel me out of the Amazon under the lights. Um then next thing I hear, and this is my perspective, you know, I'm at, you know, I'm out. Uh, my wife, you know, followed me there and then the, the doctor, ER doctor, called her into the room where I'm at. So I hear her voice. That's the next thing I remember after I've seen the lights going into the ER room is uh, I hear her talk to the doctor. So what do I do? Uh, I scare her because one, they got me laying in the bed with my arms spread out, my legs, got IVs going in both feet, both arms, you know, the whole number going on. And I hear her talk and I hear her voice and so I just, I just yell out, mommy, staring at the ceiling, you know. Um, in hindsight, we laugh about it. At the time, she was scared, and rightfully so. But so, you know, I, that's where I heard the voice. One of the things, um, one of the lessons I learned about uh, your name, now they had my name, uh, but they gave me a temporary name of called Bagpipes. Now, you gotta remember, this was St. Patty Day week. I thought it was a neat little, nice little joke about, you know, St. Patty's Day, bagpipes. So anyway, so that was my name on my wristband. Um, the funny thing is that name stuck with me for days, or well, actually for a week or so. Uh, when they transferred, a week later, you know, they said, well, they sent me to ICU. I was in ICU for a week, then I went over to rehab hospital. My wristband still had bagpipes as my name. You know, for some reason there was a little glitch there on that. But anyway, so that was the story on that. I mean, that's up to that point. And so from some re, uh, from ICU, I went over to the Mercy Rehab Hospital. And so that's another story. That's another video. But anyway, so enough for now. That's it. And um, more to come.